Hello and welcome to Politics Today. I'm Farooq Pitafi. We, has, we have been talking about uh, uh, um, India's foreign policy for quite some time. India keeps on uh, claiming that it is trying to isolate Pakistan. But recently you have seen some great movement. Uh, you saw the uh, Turkish Prime Minister, uh, sorry, President visiting Pakistan. Uh, then you also saw uh, Zalme Khalilzad visiting Pakistan and interacting uh, with Pakistan's authorities. And now you're also seeing the Secretary General of the United uh, Nations, uh, Antonio Guterres, uh, actually visiting Pakistan. And here he has been uh, lavishing Pakistan with praises. Here, uh, today he went to Qatarpur and there also he pointed out that it is approved this corridor being built, inaugurated and in function is a proof of Pakistan's intentions for peace. He also, yesterday he also thanked Pakistani state for uh, 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 allowing UNMOGIP, the uh, US forces that actually uh, monitor uh, line of control, uh, full access to the line of control. That is important. We are going to talk about his uh, visit to Pakistan and we are going to talk, uh, talk about India-Pakistan comparison in a bit. But before that, we have made a report for you. Uh, do watch it and then let us uh, start discussing. The United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres spent a very busy day visiting various places in the city of Lahore. Guterres even visited the Qatarpur corridor during his one day visit. Secretary General Guterres first visited Lahore University of Management Sciences where he spoke to students on the subject of role of youth in the United Nations in the 21st century. Guterres spoke about the great importance of youth activism in raising awareness about serious global issues. He spoke about climate change, youth activism, effects of globalization, importance of timely implementation of modern economic strategies, fighting poverty and inequality. Guterres said that the United Nations, while not perfect, is still the most powerful organization for protecting human rights and continues carrying out hundreds of humanitarian and peacekeeping operations around the world. He also said mobilization of young people is now one of the strongest elements to create political change. Guterres also praised Pakistan's significant role and contributions in UN peacekeeping operations. He answered questions of the university students as well. The UN Secretary General then visited a nearby kindergarten school where he was greeted by Punjab Health Minister Dr. Yasmin Rashid, who briefed him about the ongoing anti-polio campaign taking place in Pakistan. Guterres praised the resilience and bravery of the polio workers. He then left on a helicopter to visit the Qatarpur corridor. Once he landed there, he was given a briefing on the corridor project and a tour of the main Gurdwara building, religious water pond, art gallery, library and langar. Secretary Guterres said that the corridor was a practical example of Pakistan's desire for peace and interfaith harmony and that the opening of the corridor would promote tolerance. The Secretary General then returned to Lahore to visit the Lahore Fort. Reporting for PTV World, this is Ali Danish. Great man, right? Um, um, it seems that he has brought a lot of great, good wishes to Pakistan and uh, Pakistan's response was uh, quite enthused as well. But uh, this is one side. On the other side, when you look at what is happening in India, within a matter of 24 hours, we saw how India treats visitors who are trying to go and know about uh, what is going on, uh, uh, going on in Kashmir. I'm talking about uh, the British parliamentarian, Debbie Abramson, who actually uh, had a visa. She wanted to go to the country. And yet she was roughed up, she was uh, insulted and turned away. That is one aspect. Within a matter of 24 hours also, India calls the ambassador of Turkey to protest uh, uh, Turkey's uh, uh, president's comments uh, uh, regarding Kashmir. And then, of course, something uh, very interesting regarding the UNSG also, they have the similar kind of comments. So, uh, uh, one has to ask uh, uh, whether India is trying to isolate Pakistan or it is trying to isolate itself. Uh, today, we are going to talk about the importance of this visit. I'm talking about the UNSG's visit. And we are going to talk about uh, what is going on in India, in Kashmir as well. 
and then we will try to understand what will happen in coming days. In order to help us understand these issues, we are joined by quite an eminent panel. We are joined by Shafiq Ahmed Saab, senior journalist and regular on this show. Thank you very much sir, for being part of the program. Next to him is Dr. Vakas Ali Kausa. Uh, looks young, but he is an expert, an excellent uh, expert on uh, international relations. Thank you very much sir, for being part of the program. Next to him is uh, uh, Asma uh, Kadir Sahiba, MNA of Pakistan Tariq and Saaf. Thank you very much, ma'am, for being part of the program as well. Uh, first of all, uh, Shafiq Ahmed Saab, I have to ask you, how important do you think this visit is, this four-day visit of the UNSG to Pakistan? Very important indeed. <clears throat> it will, uh, uh, he talk on different issues right from the Afghan refugees uh, to the climate uh, issues facing the world. And also he talk on the Kartarpur corridor right. or Kartarpur open for the, uh, for the uh, Sikh community or Sikh religious uh, uh, people. Mm. Uh, they appreciate, uh, he appreciated the Pakistan's effort and he uh, appreciated the, the peace initiative taken by the government of Pakistan mm -hmm. and which uh, uh, India uh, did not respond positively, unfortunately. Right. So it is overall a very, it will uh, bring a positive image of Pakistan in the international community right. and to the world. And many uh, people are saying that given uh, what India has been doing for quite some time and it's lobbying the power it has, uh, the URSG has actually made himself vulnerable by actually uh, very clearly stating what he thinks about Kashmir, yes. what he thinks about uh, uh, Kartarpur, and also line of control. It is very clear, it is very obvious and genuine comments from the uh, United Nations Security uh, Secretary General. Yeah. He said that the issues between India and Pakistan must be settled through mediation. Mm -hmm. And India immediately responded that there is no mediation. Yeah. So, so I mean, in the other uh, sense, what you exactly said in your intro, that India is apparently isolated okay. because uh, India, uh, try to tell to the world that it is the internal affair which is not otherwise right because it's, it's not only the the issue between the two countries but there is a humanitarian issue in the in the indian part of kashmir right. the way they are using the brutal force against indian the occupied kashmir right? indian occupied yeah. kashmir and uh, they are using the way they are using the brutal force against the kashmiri people they right. are uh, using the pallet guns they have blinded hundreds of kashmiris from right from the uh, babies to the old people, right. and, uh, the way they are uh, crushing this uh, freedom struggle by the Kashmiris, right. India is exposed. And the obvious reason is that what yeah. you said, that, that India never allowed the United Nations military observer groups to travel yeah. independently to see the situation inside the Indian occupied they, Kashmir. They never actually allowed them, right? Uh, period. And let me bring in uh, Dr. Vakas, uh, your, your take on this matter, sir. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, two things. I guess uh, his visit, of course, uh, at a time uh, when Pakistan has opened the Kartapur and then uh, you see the overall scenarios, we see the Afghanistan-Pakistan peace process and the refugees thing, I guess it's very important right. for us uh, uh, as a country. And then his remarks were about generally about Pakistan, that how is it improved and transformed in many ways. That's very encouraging and it's a recognition from the a person who is holding a very key position in international politics in a way that United Nations is a very, I mean, it's the one it of is. the world's representative institution. Now, coming back to Kashmir, we need to understand a few things. One is that it has a very strong historical context. Right. United Nations Security Council has plenty of resolutions on Kashmir. You see, it starts from the 48. In right. January, they have two resolutions. Then in April, they have resolutions. In 50s, in 60s, and 70s. And I guess it has followed a process. So Kashmir was very much on their agenda. It was agreed by the both parties, actually, and it has its own international stature and personality in that context. Over the period of the time, things went in different directions. Of course, this whole region, when we see we had the Cold War phenomena, we, lots of things have been happening across in this region. Mm -hmm. But fundamentally, we have seen that the struggle of the Kashmiri people, particularly, mm -hmm. that has been continuously going on, that has been sustained by the Kashmiri indigenous people, because mm -hmm. this was the very much struggle of their fundamental political rights that they have, um, right. they have maintained. So I guess his own statement is a manifestation that this, in, this conflict, actually this issue, 
has to be resolved. It right. is the international responsibility, Absolutely. actually. But what do you do when India's foreign minister, when he is visit, uh, visiting the U.S. and he uh, is uh, actually correcting Lindsey Graham there with arrogance, that, uh, uh, come on, when you're talking about uh, Kashmir, there's only one democracy that will resolve the issue. I remember days when Pakistan used to do similar kind of things, right? And everybody used to say that the international system will actually press you and make life difficult. But India keeps on pushing the boundaries of arrogance. And there's no repercussion. See, when we say uh, repercussions, we have to contextualize it. I guess the U.S. Congress had hearings on Kashmir. We right. have seen EU, though they have postponed the voting thing on right. Kashmir, but they have carried this on. We have seen the international I'm, response in different ways. I'm, I'm, I'm grateful that they are hearing about it, right? Yeah. And that they, they took place. But do tell me, how does it improve the lives of Kashmiris which are incarcerated within their own homes? See, there is one thing we need to, we, we need to admit and we have to uh, look into this, that there was not a matching response, of course, in, uh, from the international community the way we wanted, the Kashmiri right. people wanted actually, because we take it as an international responsibility. Uh, and, and this is what that has been guaranteed by United Nations Charter, the fundamental charter of the freedom and the movement. I mean, we've seen the internal situation in Kashmir that has been crippled. Life has been made miserable in different ways. I mean, right. it's not only about this physical assault. I mean, when you have the economic losses of billions of dollars, when your education is deprived, when you have the health sector issues, when your mobility is, you know, targeted. I guess you violate many international norms and regulations. Yeah. And I, I, uh, I just, just want to say with your permission, one right. thing. it's not possible for a country which claims to be a democracy mm -hmm. to sustain this sort of act by keeping people, you know, restricting their movement and all these things and then claim yourself to be a larger right. democracy. We have seen this impact within India as well. So it's not okay. possible. So international organizations are respond, have responded and yeah, I guess I've, in future I, they will I, respond I, more. Later when I come back to you, I want to actually understand it is thought that somehow the liberal order, international order is on uh, a retreat. So how do you actually work with that system and find a solution? That is important. But let me ask Aswa Kadir Sahiba to actually tell us uh, what, what does she think of, about this visit and how does it affect India-Pakistan situation. Thank you, Farooq. Uh, as far as his uh, visit is concerned, it was a very memorable visit for us because after... It is. He still is here, yeah. right? Yeah. And, the, and after, you know, hearing him and uh, uh, reading his body language, we felt that he was very much concerned about resol resolving the issue of Kashmir mm -hmm. and knowing the facts, what is going on in the Kashmir. It is today is the 197th day of siege. Mm -hmm. And they are, being, uh, they are being kept in the house and their, their, young, their young children, the, young, the youth are being brutally tortured and they're being dragged out from house and they've been killed. So yeah. all the situation is very much clear and he has brought the concern of the other countries now those the previously for the 30 40 years you know even after uh, independence the Kashmir issue was they were the one just right. like Imran Khan's uh, PM uh, his ex ex excellency PM Imran Khan said in the uh, uh, in United uh, in Nations Security Council right. that it is the United Nation those General who Mr. gave Mr. yes yeah. they gave the right to Kashmiris for plebiscite and their independent uh, living right. they now realize it and it's thank I say thankful to we must be thankful to Prime, Prime Minister Imran Khan and Shah Mahmood Qureshi that after so many years now the people have started focusing on Kashmir issue. Right. They have started realizing how this dangerous is for the world. The two nuclear countries are going, are standing uh, to face to face towards each right. other. Right. And it can be very, uh, very, uh, what you can say, uh, dangerous for the whole region. And right. it won't be stopped. The effects are going right. go far, I, I, far I away. I get that. Uh, and uh, what the government has done mean, in the meanwhile is commendable. It has exposed India totally, yeah, right? Totally, yeah. But here's the concern. Uh, people say that uh, this response or this situation or this kind of maturity from Pakistan is 10 years late. That now international order is amorphous. Uh, nobody knows what is going to happen. India has become too boorish right now under 
uh, Narendra Modi. And that's why if you are going to stick to uh, this kind of diplomacy, it perhaps is not going to provide any relief to the Kashmiris. What do you say to those people? Uh, look, India is being bullying Pakistan for a very, very long time. And we felt that uh, the world was not, you know, hearing uh, our uh, previous, previous 30, 40, 40 years, they were not hearing us. But since the day Imran Khan has spoken in the United uh, Nations Security Council right. and made them realize how dangerous it has become, and the funnel, even the security, uh, the president of uh, United Nations, he himself said that without the diplomacy and without the dialogue, right. the peace cannot be, uh, stability and peace cannot be achieved. Absolutely. And uh, let me bring in uh, Sardar Ramesh Singh Arora, um, a member of Punjab uh, Assembly. Uh, he is with us. Uh, he was with the, the uh, United Nations Secretary General earlier in the day. Uh, Arora, sir, uh, do tell us uh, uh, what exactly was uh, uh, the feeling at that time when Pakistan was showing uh, uh, what it has done in Kartarpur. Arora, Arora sir, uh, can you hear me? Right, uh, we'll come back to that. Uh, uh, right now there seems to be some communication lapse. Let me come back to the studio. Shafiq Ahmed sahab, uh, uh, let me ask you the same question. I mean, we have been highlighting what India is doing. And I mean, uh, India doesn't need any enemies right now with Narendra Modi's foreign policy and internal policy. But despite that, the reaction, the response, the impact doesn't see, seem to be anything more than nil. What happens then? That is true. Like uh, United Nations Security Council took up the issue of uh, Kashmir right. and Pakistan uh, educated the case of Kashmiris along with China. Mm -hmm. But it was, uh, I believe, under non, uh, Article 6 of the United Nations, right. which means that it was closed door para, meeting. Para 6, right? Uh, para 6, yes. So it was a closed door meeting, and there was uh, like not that much impact, okay. impact uh, okay. bigger impact when you are not discussing openly in a general uh, assembly. Right. So it was uh, uh, the way Pakistan educated the case in every forum. It is definitely Pakistan played his very important role. But unfortunately, because of the bigger economy, we have been talking since long yeah. that India has a population of over 1.2 billion. So the, the European countries or the other um, American, they are considering that in mind because of the big economy or the, uh, the consumer market of India. So that is why they are not that much taking uh, steps. Otherwise, what we have seen, like it's a human right violation. It is right. not a dispute between India and Pakistan yeah. only. Yeah. The way people are being killed or forcefully so, picked up by the security uh, agencies and even the important leadership of Kashmiris are behind the bars currently. Right. Uh, so I'm told that MPA uh, Sadar Ramesh Singh Arora is back with us. Uh, um, uh, today, uh, Arora Sahib, you were with the UNSG and uh, you went to uh, Qatarpur as well. Do tell us what were his impressions? Dara Arora, can you hear us? Make a communication. Uh, I mean, the, this is like television things happen, right? Uh, let me uh, come back to the studio and let me ask uh, Dr. Vakas uh, uh, your, your opinion on this matter. That there are many who keep on saying that no matter how much soft power you use, because India has a lot of uh, diplomatic muscle, it has a lot of money to bribe other countries as well or people as well. That's why the only solution is uh, undiplomatic through a fight. Uh, see, there are two uh, perspectives to it. When we see uh, earlier, you spoke about this sort of collapse or degeneration of the world order of the liberal values yeah. in particularly. Mm -hmm. We have to see two things. Uh, I mean, what is the alternative to the world? Mm -hmm. When you have the institutions which you, we all claim that they are based on the democratic values of justice, including United Nations mm -hmm. and the others. Now, 
we have seen bit of it reflection in India in particularly. You have seen how the society, uh, a country which was calling itself a secular state, but we have seen over the period of time just within five, six years, it has yeah. literally changed the very fabric of the society. Right. It the, is degrading fast. Yeah, so it, the very nature of the society, the existence is challenged mm -hmm. and which is, I guess, in a modern nation states where you believe in the values that people have to travel each other, you have to cooperate, you have to you create you know certain new mechanism based on the right. cooperation justice, I don't think so this is feasible. In right. western countries we have also seen where we have the exclusionist uh, uh, maybe discriminatory policies, we have seen that this is not working within those societies. Right. This generation of the people that is right now in this universe I must say. Our I generation. Get, our generation, okay. in particularly, I believe that are too young. <laughs> so my generation and yours. So I don't think so. They can okay. they can afford this entire thing because it has larger bearing with the society. It mm -hmm. has different. It has context attached to it. The other option, mm -hmm. if uh, the way we see, I mean, this is a reality. Nation states are very powerful. It's not mm -hmm. only about India. Many nation states which are weaker than India in economy mm -hmm. uh, terms, when they have violated, uh, this is also a question for the international like organizations. Iraq, for instance. And like Afghanistan, are, Afghanistan, we have seen them in the case of Rohingyas and Myanmar. Yeah. People have been raising a lot of voices, but but, uh, but in in that case, at least we saw international law, international process stepping in. Yeah. So what, what in I, India's case, it doesn't seem to be the yeah. case. I, I just want to make a point that these nation states over the period of time grew very strong in terms of you know uh, they don't allow interventions. Right. But when it comes to Kashmir, I have a very great hope and civil lining. See, as a Kashmiris. The resistance is not dependent upon the international support. Mm -hmm. This resistance is very much indigenous. Mm -hmm. It has a contest, it has a history, and it has a lot of you know political sentiments behind that. The only understanding is there is a hope. Mm -hmm. If this continues, I mean this is not only the interest of Kashmiris for that sake. We need to understand the larger piece where Prime Minister also hinted with the uh, Secretary General's conversation that the entire piece, when the world is so deeply connected, you cannot afford to have such a volatile region he also stressed the Secretary General that you should have a de-escalation. Right. Why it has a larger bearing on the world's global okay. politics as well. Right. So just see one thing. Your, I, I, I like your very nuanced uh, reply, but with due respect, my, uh, the answer to my question was lost somewhere in there. Because I believe Is that... Is what an option? I don't think so. Why not? There's, there are reasons to it. I believe personally that... Uh, war at the end of the day, if we invest our energies towards peace instead right. of wars, I guess wars didn't bring yeah, peace anywhere. Yeah, but one side doesn't want to listen to any diplomatic language. I guess uh, it also depends upon the people of that side. I mean, you can see the elections in Delhi. Yeah. BJP was sort of whitewashed. It's an indicator. I don't idealize Aam Admi Party or no, KGR's policy. No, I'm not policy. talking about Aam Admi Party. Yeah. The, f the fact is that it is too small a sample to project on entire India I and it is too cosmopolitan a, uh, a sample, mm -hmm. right? The problem is that even there, BJP actually gains seats, not lose seats. See, but they have been in power. We have seen the media, the way they have used their media. We have seen the way they have used the state power over so, there, the language over there, the way okay. they have used. My so only, only point next is... Next elections are going to be after four years. No, no. There so are elections. Do we wait till then? No, no. I guess there are elections in... I mean, if we say an indicator... Coming, coming here is more important since because... This is in Bihar. Be they are in other, other Uttar Pradesh yeah, as well. but Kashmir is Kashmir and you are talking about a central government. No, no. My point that is different. That doesn't my weaken point its is, control over my, my point is people have to react, the center voices have to react. International world do not afford these hostilities, discriminatory policies. I mean, I have just it, questioned... It clearly does. I mean, you had Bala code exchange and look, what did the world it, do? It, look, it has the, it look, has the cost. Farooq, look, you have to analyze the visit of uh, President of United Nations. Uh, the Secretary okay. General. Yeah, yeah. So the Secretary General, sorry. So his visit, there's a, I see a background picture. Right. The world was, there were so many uh, uh, analysts were saying, observers were saying that perhaps the India will keep bu bullying Pakistan and will not hear what the world is concerned of that uh, uh, keep doing their uh, at their will, the India. But I see differently. Why, why he has visited? 
the world has realized that it's not the market people say because of the market in india perhaps the pakistan will be cornered no right. it is today all the world is concerned now right. because the collaboration between pakistan and china having the economic corridor right. there's a lot of development going on and the world can see it right. so as you say the the economic uh, situation or the what you can say the market the indian market in the world market will go and influence no okay it's going if the things are changing then, then the things to, are the, the things then are explain changing. to me okay. uh, explain to me that india unilaterally Uh, you know, abrogated the state uh, the Article 370, 35A, all its commitments, uh, international commitments went uh, went out of the window, and nobody said a word. Far Farooq, look, there like recently when uh, Secretary General visited, what our foreign minister said, right. he made him realize that look, we are going, we are abiding by United Nation resolutions. we are abiding by resol uh, united nations charter principles mm -hmm. is the india is not going right. so how far they going if the world is going to take it look every, the what, time what has happens when the world decides the, not to take no no it is it if what, the what world decides that? look if the world had i feel it if the world had that kind of perception the secretary general wouldn't have visited come no. on Come on! Uh, look, it's the pressure. It's the I, pressure. I, I understand what within, you're saying. Within the chart, within the quarters of the United Nations. I understand what you're saying. I understand what you're saying. Right? Mm. Uh, I understand that Pakistan is an important country, and the world realizes that but they have to pay attention to Pakistan as well. Pakistan I, is I a very important. I don't think that it is uh, uh, not going to affect us positively. It will. But with due respect, when you're talking about Kashmir. the people of kashmir seems to have been relegated to some subhuman category where nobody even sees their rights anymore i mean have you thought of any other place where people have been barricaded within their own uh, places look, we, for 200 days look prime minister has very clearly said Uh, on the floor of United Nations. Absolutely, if he said very clearly. And if hats, nobody is going to, course. what will happen? If we'll, if there be bloodshed, it, if there will be bloodbath in uh, Kashmir, we'll fight. We have given our verdict over there. All right? right. So there's so okay. So what we are at the moment, there is a time we are playing with the rationality. We are playing with sanity. Okay. Right. And with the world, we want to prove we are sane people. Muslims are sane people. and on the other hand that we were saying that india Pakistan india is, is people, uh, over right? un, uh, uh, yeah. taken by rss yeah. so that's the world is also seeing it and it's the time is very close the always it never happens how far you can go on okay time is very close so people. what happens after that time what exactly is the world going to do when it comes to kashmir and look india? what i feel like if the if the india can do unilaterally uh, annex uh, 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 right. indian occupied kashmir right we can do the same uh, indian occupied kashmir we can annex that i, I can feel like i can do it Right. Uh, See, you, so we have the choice. Look, that's, that's look, a very I have the choice. Idea, well, I know, no, but you I forget suppose, that there is a live wire in the center. You keep saying called keep, LOC. I can. Okay, yes, but G, we haven't broken the uh, the charters, principles, and values. Okay, and laws. Okay. But there is a lot of so, choices as, before as us. We can do it. War, right? Only, yeah, we are we are telling the world we cannot go for the war, and this is not good for the whole region. it's not going it's going to bad effect everyone will be affected so we are trying to trying to save humanity on earth right. and the same the general secretary right. said that human rights not to be okay. violated in the occupied kashmir i understand both my uh, guests actually want to come and doctors are first you and then um, yep. let me go to shafiq saab as well please see go. whatever has happened in past regarding kashmir mm. we have to see it in a context that what happened we might have to put more efforts at that time we couldn't We need yeah. to understand in past. Now you are talking about Article 370, or you are talking before about that even? Because you know that Kashmiri struggles, Kashmiri resistance are different angles, and they, we were unable to communicate. Even they provide platforms to Kashmiris to voice their aspirations and right. thinkings. The way society reacted, right. that is something we missed. We we have to understand that it cannot come now overnight. I guess post 370. 
people uh, have shown mobilization, diaspora, different people have reacted in a different ways. And I guess this is the time when people started realizing in the Western capitals. Uh, Dr. Saab, uh, with due respect, when you talk about Indian attitude, with due respect, people uh, of Shaheen Bagh are protesting. But again, uh, it is really saddening that they they will talk about everything under the sun, but they are not talking about Kashmir. No, no I, right? I tell you, there is Ajay, similarly mm -hmm. uh, when uh, this uh, U.S. MP, uh, British MP, was uh, deported, she was not allowed to, uh, to enter. Who came to the government's rescue? Congress Party. Okay. So Indians don't consider Kashmir so, so as so almost so human no, beings. No, I have a question. See, when you say they don't consider, the question is, as a sane person, I mean, you, if you see. What India has achieved after 5th of August on Kashmir? Right. Kashmir has went to United Nations Security Council twice. Yeah. International community has responded. Right. Even the people within the Kashmir, those who are pro-Indian, called pro-Indian parties, even they have taken their step back and, you know, sort of created a new ideas that, look, this is unacceptable. India and, has and, lost... And the very same people who were uh, talking about, the, who and were justifying this uh, uh, sending back of uh, British MP. So... My point is that you realize what I'm saying. Yeah, so India has lost. India has lost Kashmir in a way that yeah, after 370, India has completely lost the hope in Kashmir. Even those parties who are pro India, right? They have changed their stance. Right. My point to you is see, there, is, there are two dynamics within India one is the Indian politics. I mean, Shaheen Bagh, what is happening? Even BJP did politics on Shaheen Bagh. You have right. seen that their election was that we will root them out, let, yeah, them, let Delhi, us come into yeah. power. I guess this petty politics and politics of power did not help India in long, long term. Yeah. My concern is that this okay, can help BJP. Now you use a term which is quite uh, interesting. You said in the long term, Indian. Yeah. So what do you mean by long term? See, I mean a country which you call so diverse far, yeah. with the minorities and all these things. Mm -hmm. The way you are shattering its very fabric of the okay. society. Your GDP has gone down. Okay. You have set a target for 2024. 425 of certain trillion dollars uh, right. uh, economy, it's not going None to work. None of that happens. So and yet, in 2019, Narendra Modi is re-elected with th thumping majority. I guess it's very easy to Why do to politics based it on... Yet? It's very easy no, to do... One. No, but no. the question Why is, yes. question is it's your choice. It's your choice. Before it's very easy had, to. Time is not, I think, appropriate. No, I just no, want to say I, one thing. I, under, I understand, uh, Dr. Gossett, that you are also a Kashmiri, right, by origin. And um, what I want to know is, when we talk to our Kashmiri brothers on the other side who are going through hell, what do we tell? How long they'll have to be patient for this thing to actually bring the realistic results that are needed? See, there are two aspects to it. Kashmiris will continue their resistance, yeah. whatever the way India behaved, right. and they don't have much expectation at all. Expectations from India, that's reality. Right. In Karnataka, you have seen in Hubali, three Kashmiri students were re-arrested today uh, on yeah. Saturday, yeah. just because the mo they were manhandled by mob in the court, right. and they said, "Look, they have uh, chanted the slogan, pro-Pakistan slogan. We have to arrest them." One thing we need to understand: there is no expectations right now from the BJP, particularly government, that Kashmiris have associated with. There is no expectation. Second thing, try to understand, Kashmiris have over the period of time given laid the sacrifices and they have mastered the art of resistance. Right. It's a non-violent resistance as right. well. Now, there is a hope. There no, is an understanding is from Kashmir. there a timeline also? Because I, I'm, I'm glad Start that you mentioned that Indian government is trying to shatter the uh, social fabric of the country. But what else has that shattered? It has shattered the rights of Kashmiri people. It has shattered Kashmir's economy, which has gone down no. dramatically. And life has become totally miserable for the people, right? So why? And then Amit Shah, the interior minister of India, who was heading BJP until yesterday, he also uses very interesting terms. They keep on calling people they don't like, for example, Bengalis and others or Muslims, as vermin. So what they are essentially trying to do, the purpose behind this Article 35, uh, 35A uh, abrogation is that they want to drive away all the Kashmiris and repopulate the See, place. But there is one point to it. Why we only mention, this is a continuation of certain policies. Right. Kashmiris have suffered economically before. 
Kashmiris have suffered with AFSPA, Kashmiris have suffered with other legal, uh, illegal detentions yeah. and other things. The fundamental point is why Indian government has done that. Okay. The only reason is to cripple the very much resistant structures in Kashmir. That is not happening. Right. Uh, do you want to comment, sir? No, nothing. Like, uh, I mean, what is my understanding? The Pakistan government should continue blaming and shaming India at, at every forum. I mean, initiating a war with uh, with India on the issue of Kashmir is not a sensible advice, by the way. Right. Uh, I think that the international community... Well, uh, explain why is it not sensible? Look, we are a peace-loving peace nation. Right. So, uh, like, war is not solution to any problem. Right. So, so war is not the solution. When, even when some injustice is taking place. So we have to push hard United Nation. There are seven, uh, eleven resolution on Kashmir, with a, uh, with United Nation, mm. and they are not discussing, not taking any step to solve the problem of Kashmir. And and I think that initially, when Donald Trump uh, met uh, the Prime Minister. Uh, he offered to mediate between yeah. uh, Pakistan and, and India. It was a very good proposal. Uh, and, it was a great proposal and he said that it, wa it actually came from Narendra Modi and then you see the report coming from Anwar Iqbal Sahib in Washington that it was that which actually prompted India to re annex Kashmir. <laughs> I mean, what are you going to do that? Yes. And uh, then Trump is going to the look, uh, look, to India. I, I agree with Dr. Kosa Saab in in one way. Like there were three, uh, four last election lost all of them by BJP. By the way, right. So it is, and the, the next year is very important. Like all the important st states, there will be election. Like Shafiq four, Saab, five. Uh, Shafiq Saab, with due respect, I actually let me tell you, I am far far away from being a war monger, right? I totally believe uh, the guy was never killed, even a sparrow in his but life. But I'm sorry, today right. you were looking like no. General Bakshi. No, I'm uh, okay. Uh, thank you very much for <laughs> calling me totally insane. Uh, thank you very much for doing that, but I will take it on the face value. Uh, here's the humble submission. I mean, we have to be honest, right? On one side, we see bully of a country, which is destroying lives every single day. And then we have been taught, uh, and f it has been ingrained into our, our spirits, that you have to respect law, that you should be pacifist and everything. And then the entire system, I'm not talking about Antonio uh, Guterres, uh, I'm talking about the world leaders who might be sitting in the UNSC. Where is the solution? I mean, sh am I to make peace with the fact that now Kashmiris will be treated as subhuman? And that Indian minorities will be treated as such when we are trying to argue here that everyone should be equal. Uh, look, uh, what is my understanding? Like uh, Tayyip Erdogan, the way he issued a statement. Right. Tayyip Erdogan is Erdogan is definitely one of the uh, top leader in the Muslim nations, mm -hmm. along with Mahathir Muhammad. He also supported uh, the issue right. of Kashmir and Pakistan's stance on the Kashmir. So I think, mm -hmm. I mean, this is this should continue. And it will continue to highlight the plight of Kashmiris and right. the way Indian security forces are handling the Kashmiris right. or maiming or blinding that's, people. That's a good so point, but we have to come up with a solution as well. Azma Saiba, because your party actually rules the country, let me actually bring it to you. What exactly is the solution? And can you give us a timeline? How soon will it start working? Because there has to be some reprieve. Right now, the thesis, uh, hypothesis is that India, what it is doing to its own people, it is going to actually fall prey to its own hubris and it is going to crumble like USSR. But we don't know whether that is going to happen or not because USSR was actually totally devoid of capital at that time. India is quite rich. Uh, even when Russia was rich, nobody knew that one day Russia is going to be toppled into, divided yeah. into so many. So, you know, the, what's going to happen next or in the coming year, nobody can predict that right. or nobody can even tell you. But what, whatsoever is happening in, in India, from there we can observe, we can anal analyze and conclude. Mm -hmm. But what we actually, our government is trying that first we want that Today is the 197th day the people are under curfew. Let that curfew to be lifted first. Okay. And let's see what happens with the troop. Look, there are about 8 million people and 900 million troops over there. Right. What, is the, what, is, what will happen? What do you think the troops will going to do? 
Right. Once the uh, curfew lifted, everyone is watching, and the 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 world also wants. We, that's why pressurizing. This is what the uh, United Nations Secretary General said that the human rights law must not be violated in Kashmir. Right. right? It is and universal. A, in a universal. And with that, we also say the day it will be lifted, we want to see the reaction of. Kashmir, we want their their right of determination, self determination, to be given, right. and everybody is ready now. Everyone is ready. One thing which I want to, as you people were discussing, that we haven't included the major country that <coughs> played a negative <coughs> role, and that was British Lord Mountbatten. At least they should be brought into the, on the, to the table. That look, your country wants the viceroy of. Louis Mountbatten, what he he played a very negative role. Rather, I should stay. Uh, I should stay. The uh, uh, he made <coughs> uh, our Kashmir to be stolen by India. Right. He helped. He right. helped. But so the the problem the, is he is dead. Uh, uh, no, but the country is dead because the country uh, yeah, actually. But it is a different country. Forty-seven and now. No, I no, there is responsibility still even still lie responsible, there. Responsible. But, responsibility yeah, still lies there. My, anyway. Anyway, what you are saying is so the day the curfew. First thing which we want and everybody wants right. is curfew to be lifted. Let's see what they want. And the day the curfew will be limited, we uh, oh sorry lifted, lifted. We are very much scared that there will be bloodbath. So right. And what even, will happen even then? Even if India withdraws <coughs> from Pakistan its negative practice, it is going to lead to more suffering. Suffering. And what will happen? Then we retaliate. We'll take action. We'll fight. Right. We'll fight. We have no top no, option uh, after we, that. Let me, uh, I'm uh, we will have no left, option uh, left then to fight them. Okay. Uh, what Prime Minister has been telling again and again, yeah. there is possibility of like... Uh, Exhort us as well. Uh, right, yes. sir. I'm told that we have to conclude the program here. But uh, to, to be honest, uh, um, 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 one has to actually look at the situation and try finding as many solutions as possible. At least what we can do is remind people who have been teaching us the importance of human rights, that it is important uh, to treat That's us as human beings as well. Yeah, exactly. uh, Shafiq Ahmad Sahib, thank you very much for your time. Dr. Bakas Ali Kosa, thank you very much for your time as well. Asma Kadir Sahiba, thank you very much for your time as well. Uh, viewers, you have listened to our participants. The discussion about Kashmir will continue. But uh, I think it was G.B. Shaw who said that the wrong kind of people keep on looking for circumstances. Uh, uh, they keep on complaining about circumstances uh, that are there. Uh, the right kind of people actually stand up and look for the circumstances they want. If they don't get them, they make them. And the point is, between war and total diplomacy, there must be other ways also to influence others, to wake the world up, because the people in Kashmir are really suffering. Well, don't trust me. See the pictures. So look at the mental predictions of various uh, you know, experts on um, uh, human psychology and do interact with people from Kashmir to know what they are going through. If the world has to actually come up with this kind of appeasement in the end, then I, I mean, why did you find, uh, for fight Hitler in 1945? Should I have let him do whatever he wanted, right? Otherwise, if all human beings are equal and everybody has, has, has rights, then if we do anything wrong in our end, uh, at our brand, do press us. But if India is doing something wrong, do take them to task. This was today's program. Thank you very much for watching. Take care.